Hello everybody, this is Johns Hopkins with Baltimore Heritage and we're back with another of our 5 Minute Histories videos and today I'm in the old Goucher neighborhood, 23rd and St. Paul Street. Behind me is a building called Hooper House. It's named after James E. Hooper, the head of a cotton mill company back then. When it was built in 1886, it was right across the street from the brand new Women's College of Baltimore, soon to change its name to Goucher College. Uh, back then this was a hot new real estate market. We're going to talk about the Hooper House today. I uh, want to say a quick thanks to Jim Burns from the Lab School, which is uh, located in one of the old Goucher buildings across the street. So thanks so much, Jim. Uh, but let's jump into the Hooper House by starting uh, by starting with James Hooper. Um, he was born into a cotton manufacturing family. His grandfather, William, came over from Londonbury, Ireland in the early 1800s and got into the cotton business. He had a bunch of sons, including one also named William, a little confusing, um, and the firm was called William E. Hooper and Sons. Uh, William the Junior, who was James's dad, remember we're going to talk about James, the builder of this house, uh, but William the dad got into the business at age 15 and was a real go-getter. He apparently would wake up before dawn, row out onto the harbor to meet the boats that were coming in from who knows where, climb aboard and measure out their rigging, and by the time the sun came up, he had inked deals to fit out the boats with new sail cloth from his factory. The Hoopers were making cotton duck or what was uh, sail cloth back then. Um, the Jones Falls Valley where they had a number of their mills was, a, was making the lion's share of cotton duck um, around the world. Um, William, the dad, in addition to being a cotton manufacturer, was an ardent unionist um, during the Pratt Street riots in 1861 when Massachusetts troops were marching to Washington, D.C. in the buildup to the Civil War. Southern Baltimore sympathizers uh, attacked them and William Hooper uh, came and helped them out. When Abraham Lincoln was assassinated, it was William Hooper who donated his horse and carriage to carry the coffin on its journey northward to Illinois. Southern Sympathizing Baltimoreans didn't like him very much, uh, but his business thrived. When James was born in 1841, his dad was on the beginning of a business tear. Um, he would uh, go on to buy uh, a, a Woodbury Mill, Clipper Mill, and Mount Washington Mill, where uh, Whole Foods is today. Along the way, partnering with milling giants like Horatio Gambrill and David Carroll. James takes over the milling operation, the family business, in 1885 and is an innovator himself. Um, he built a new mill along the Jones Falls, excuse me, uh, uh, called Hooperwood Mill. It was the first all-electric mill uh, for cotton duck along the Jones Falls. The company at that point was called the Mount Vernon Woodbury Cotton Duck Company. In addition to being forward-looking in his business life, he was forward-looking in his civic life as well. Um, at an early time in the 1870s, he uh, said that the company would no longer hire girls younger than 12. That doesn't sound very radical to our ears today, but back then he was the only one making that commitment. Um, he also set a weekly uh, limit on the number of hours that boys under 16 could work, and in 1873 ran for the state legislature under a campaign of child uh, labor reforms. He was able to get through one bill that said uh, kids under 16, no matter what industry you worked in, whether it was cotton mills or canning or whatever, um, you couldn't work more than 10 hours a day. Again, it seems almost ludicrous that a bill like that was even needed, but back then Hooper had to work his tail off to get that through the Maryland State Legislature. I want to mention one more thing about James before we talk about the house, and that's his connection to a new contraption uh, back in the early 1900s, and that was the automobile. He was one of the first Baltimoreans to own one, and in 1901, in his living room behind me, he uh, started and became president of a group called the Automobile Club of Maryland, it quickly joined a national affiliation called the American Automobile Association. And if you don't, if that's not ringing a bell, think AAA, the folks who, if you're like me, bail you out on the side of the road several times a year with a flat tire or a broken alternator. For all of that, we can thank, at least in part, uh, James Hooper uh, here at his mansion on St. Paul Street. All right, enough of the Hoopers. How about the house? When James decided to build in 1880, 
1986, again, a year after Goucher College was founded. He brought on one of the most notable architects of the day, Charles Carson, who had designed many of the Goucher College buildings and Lovely Lane Church just down the street. Uh, so real superstar there. The house itself is a whopper. It is 12,000 square feet, and it's considered one of Baltimore's finest examples of Queen Anne-style architecture. Um, we don't have a whole lot of that here in Baltimore. We have got tons of Italianate row houses, but not a lot of Queen Anne. If you are not an architect or an architecture buff, uh, the things that this house is telling you of why it's Queen Anne um, include its irregular front, uh, no symmetrical neo-colonialism here. Um, it's small scale detailing. There are wonderful details there, but you got to really look for them. And multiple steep pitched roofs. Uh, this is not your Italianate flat roofed row house for sure. Um, so a really fabulous standalone uh, 12,000 foot uh, Queen Anne style house. Um, and uh, it's a wonderful place, but it almost didn't make it. Just a few years ago in 2022, the top floor caught fire. At that point, it had been owned for uh, almost two decades by a local business owner of Morpheus Records. He had set up a recording studio in the basement and turned the upper floors into artists' uh, studios. In the fire, the roof caught fire, and luckily no one was injured, but there were a number of artwork uh, pieces that were damaged, um, and luckily the building itself uh, came out okay. Um, today, it has been rehabbed with the strong support of the Neighborhood Association, and its outside is fabulous, and its inside is fabulous. The original uh, uh, wood-carved panels are there, high ceilings, tiled fireplaces, a lot of it still inside, uh, really gorgeous. I'm going to wrap up and say uh, today it's under new ownership, but uh, still with an artistic focus, including the culinary arts. On the upper floors, there are artist studios and a, a public art gallery, and on the main level, is a new restaurant called Mama Coco's. So the next time you're anywhere near Old Goucher or downtown or central Baltimore, I urge you to make a point to come on over, check out the artists and their artwork, maybe stay for a cup of coffee or a cocktail or shrimp and grits, which is what I had for lunch just the other day, and it was fantastic. Thanks so much, and we'll see you next time.